Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 70. Yes, 70, that big 7 and that big 0. Not really big, but it's just little. But anyway, I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Good evening, Norman. How are you, Dan? Especially derpy today, so it's my turn to be the derpster. Yay! Now you have been infected by my derps. Awesome. Yep. In case you all are wondering what happened, for all of you techies out there, I accidentally forwarded port 80 on my router. <laughs> yes, I can hear you laughing. I hope somebody comments on that, or at least Twitter it. Because I don't think Norman and Charlie know what I'm talking about. I, I know, I know, I know. You explained it to me just now, but... Eh, I, I no, just, you're not supposed to know that, but never mind. <laughs> I just want people to, just people to tweet back and see if they laugh at you or ask how is it, did you get it fixed or not. But anyway, let's I mean, move. I'm talking about my port ID, not the MBS show. The MBS show's fine, don't worry. Uh, true, true, true. But at least people have concern for you, maybe. I hope. And also joining us is Charlie. Hi. Hi, Charlie. How are you? I'm a little bit tired, but I'm still alive. Awesome, awesome. Great to have you back. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Dan. It's been a while. There's been a lot of local news happening on. That's awesome. Yes, indeed there is. Good to see Malaysians doing something. True, indeed. But, Charlie, you've been off for so long. We need to ask you two questions. Who is favorite character? Oh, um, Fluttershy? Okay. Did I get that right? That's I don't know, that's game, your right? favorite character. <laughs> yeah, that's so right. We, we don't ask the trap question of who is best pony, because, never mind, I won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Wars were started with those words. Yes, I agree. And, uh, For favorite... Equestria, <laughs> we don't. Uh, anyway, um, favorite episode? Uh, it's still Lesson Zero. Ah. It hasn't changed. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So, this week we don't have a guest. Because all of the guests went to EFNW. Ever free Northwest? Yep, yep. Uh, I wish I was there. I wish I was there. Maybe next year. I hope. <laughs> and to all of you at Ever free Northwest, especially Tim and Clockwork, we wish you all the best. And we know you're having a great time there. So, here's hugs and wishes from the MBS show. Indeed. And don't forget to panic. <gasps> panic. Indeed. So anyway, in housekeeping, last week I mentioned that I'm holding a contest and I'm going to explain it a bit more. Starting from July 6th, we will ask one question a week for the month of July, collect all four questions and submit your answer to the MBS show at gmail.com and stand a chance to win the My Little Pony Elements of Harmony book. The first person to submit with all the four correct answers will win. Will win. Good luck and have fun. Um, yep. I own the book, and I think Charlie here owns it, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I have a copy. And yeah. it's good, right? Yes, I've skimmed. I haven't read all of it in detail, but I've uh, skimmed through it, and I find it. Yes, it's really, it's good for what it is. An so wait, 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 wait. You're all reading an encyclopedia. An encyclopedia. Yeah. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, an encyclopedia well, called The Elements of Harmony. Welcome back to university, where we start reading reference books. <laughs> hey, but it's cool, it's cool, it's really good. And it's... the cover art is really good and the insights are really nice. I, I especially like the part where they have little speech bubbles. Not really speech bubbles, but just bubbles. Quotes. Yeah. yeah, quotes from the show. Like from um, random quotes from the show, right? No, 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 not the random quotes. It's basically huh? quotes from the creators like Megan McCartney saying that she enjoys working on it or somebody says oh. that... I see what you mean, like uh, the beginning of the, each chapter where they had a, a little bit of blurb uh, before they start the chapter. Yeah, it's, it's, it's scattered all over the book, really. If I were to read this, Hasbro will come chew on my buttocks and <laughs> ask me to take down the episode. So, I won't read. It's true, it's true thinking, Alman. Yes, indeed. But anyway, um, you can stand a chance to win the book by just answering four questions. And this week's questions will be at near the end of the show. I don't know. I'll just place it there. So you have to listen to the whole episode. Yay. So anyway, um, who wants to take this second one? I'll do it. And of course, um, I don't know what's with my luck or something, but Equestria Girls is going to be airing on Malaysian TV on the 28th of July. Yes, Yay, Equestria Girls good. is coming here. You don't need to get your cam rips or your 1080s anymore. It's coming to TV, like terrestrial TV. You don't even need Astro. 
Indeed. And it's 20, July 28, 2013 at 11.30 30, 11.30 a.m. on MTV7, your feel-good channel. <laughs> they say they feel good, but now I'm trying to believe them. They show ponies. Yeah, they show ponies, so basically they took a good step right there. But the thing is, it's the movie on TV. Yeah, I mean, have you ever heard of an 11.30 a.m. movie except for those on, well, the Hindi channels? I got no idea. Or the HBO? I don't know, but no, seriously, it's the movie just came out. Not even a month ago, right? Yeah, and now they're showing it on local TV. That's rather quick, isn't it? I know. Yeah, it's very quick. And I think that sooner or later, I mean, the Blu-ray is already open for order, so I guess it's going to just be a matter of days before we can get it. Hope so. Actually, thinking more about it, don't you guys think it's a little bit as if they have made the movie for theatres as a bonus? Seems to me like they're actually planning a direct-to-video release, but instead they chose to gamble with a full theatre theater release. They could have done that, yep. Yeah. I mean, um, we covered this news a while back where they did a direct-to-DVD cover. It was Equestria Girls and then suddenly hits movie theatres and then spin-off. I, I, I got no idea. Anything involving Equestria Girls is going to induce rage. So um, for people who want to watch it, you have a chance to watch it on TV. Yes, yep. TV. Yes. And for those of you who are like Norman, well, you know where to find your stuff. Mm, Yo, yeah. ho! <laughs> yeah. So, Charlie, what did you take this one? In the third piece of housekeeping today, we have MLP Comics. And it is out locally. For today, you can actually find the MLP Comics at the Borders Bookstores, sold for $60.99. That's in Ringgit. This uh, book consists of a hardcover copy by... Andy Price and Katie Cook, and it consists of the first four of the comics, all in one. Ooh. It looks pretty good, actually. On the outside, it's like a girly, girly cover kind of thing, but on the inside, you get some pretty dark comic stuff. Uh, okay, so basically this covers all four chapters of the series, right? The four starting comics? Yeah, and that's right. The issues number one to issues... Uh, this is number one to four. Um, it's all like abridged, so it's one. It's it, it, continuous. Charlie, it's, it's not abridged. It's abridged. straight paper back. Uh, so it's prolonged. No, it's just straight paper back. Uh, they compile everything into one. By the time you reach the fifth page, if you like to continue reading. No, they, they won't have. They won't have any. They 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 they'll probably make the second straight paper back for the second chapter. Yeah, very very likely because at the yeah at the spine of the book we can see a, a large number one over there. So this thing is going to become a collection. It's going to be number two, okay. probably number three, number four. I do not know. I think they're I think they're officially at number nine already or something. What okay. book? The book. comics series. I think they're on book number. Give me a second. Let me count. Four, eight. Yes, nine. Nine, right? Yeah. yeah. That's right. And they have micro series as well, so... What, inside the uh, comic? Uh, no, not in the comic. I would totally buy that if it was inside the comics, <laughs> like, double kill. <laughs> yeah, indeed. But like, they, that's they, they something. They do have a neat extra inside the uh, uh, trade paperback comic. At the end of it, you actually get the other covers, the, the variants. Really? Yes. Yeah. And but like, it's supposed to be the case all along? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's planned all along. But it's not a full page cover as it seems. It's just like an art gallery, as if the original concept uh, image. Oh. So you, you, you're getting images, you're not getting the full covers. But it's oh. still good because it, it's a bonus. I want my derpy landing on comic book covers. Mm. <laughs> anyway, let's, so, so it, that let's, move on. let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. And in today's news time, Mimoko rolls out derpy hoof flash drive for San Diego Comic Con 2013. A while back, we mentioned that the folks at Mimoko were producing the My Little Pony flash drives. Now, for the up-and-coming San Diego Comic Con 2013, they've made an exclusive Derpy Hoof flash drive. Only 850 pieces will be made and sold at San Diego Comic Con. Don't fret, for you too can pre-order your very own Derpy Hoof flash drives at their website. Links can be found in the show notes. So, who here wants to get this derpy flash drive? Not a fan of it. I lose all my pen drives anyway. Uh, mm. Just to know what went wrong. It does look quite um, appealing. I mean, it's, it's not as 
funny as I thought it would be, but uh, I probably won't buy it. <laughs> uh, it looks good. I don't know why, but anything that has derpy on it looks good. I'm waiting to see what content they're going to preload in the drive. Um, I think it could be just a copy pasta of the previous one. Uh, well, there probably will be more derpy centered because the previous ones contained Twilight, Pinky, and a uh, rarity, if I'm not mistaken, mm, or Rainbow Dash. Can't I think it's Twi- Princess Alicorn Twilight. Yes, Princess Twilight Sparkle. Yes, and the weeks that she still can't put away. Oh, you just oh, you just need to watch it. Uh, you just need to watch the movie. That's a funny scene with that. And I mean, I think that's that, that's what was in the previous pen drives. And now with um, our good friend Derpy Hopes in this, we they probably will put in more exclusive stuff with her. Maybe yeah. wallpapers, uh, something like that. You never know. Crack screen wallpapers. Oh god, I don't know. Uh, but the pen drive starts at nineteen ninety nine or just nineteen ninety, and goes up to much higher based on your size. The nineteen dollars and ninety cent pen drive is a uh, eight gig, and it goes higher to hundred plus for one hundred twenty gig, something like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, you guys should actually check out what people are saying on the EQD comments. They're quite punny. Oh, you. <laughs> All data gets deleted. I just don't know what went wrong. <laughs> oh, you. Hopefully, it will come with virtual muffins and sound bites too. <laughs> That'd be cool. You like have an auto run inside. You plug it in, and suddenly your computer screen goes blue screen. You panic, and then derpy flies out. Like, oops, my bad. And she pulls it down. Oh no. <laughs> No, that is just bad. Is no, just I would bad. love that, you know, can just prank people's computers. Like, hey, hey, have you heard this cool new song? Plug it in, kajak me. I think you would be r- at maximum rage with knowing you and technology. If I see Derpy, it will immediately calm me down, but I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably make something like that if I have the time. Oh, you. No, I'm, but... glad, I'm glad it's an exclusive merch. I mean, it's good to see uh, some something rather unique, I must say. True, true. <laughs> Only 850 pieces will be sold, mm. so better get them fast. I tried, but it's too expensive for me, so no. <laughs> uh, and no cheating. We need to stop waiting behind trucks in China. <laughs> I don't think so. This is all made in America. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's fun. Uh, uh, Mimoko, I was going to say Funko. Yeah. Funko is the next one. Where did you take that one, Dan? Yeah, since I brought up Funko, recently some interesting pictures have popped up on Derpy Boru. Judging from these pictures... Could they be prototypes of Funko's vinyl pony figures? So far, we have seen Pinky, Octavia, Spitfire, Bon Bon, and Lyra heartstrings. Take a look at the pictures found in the show notes. We just hope they don't freak you out. There's a link as well to the Equestria Daily article. So, they look a lot, a lot like the Funko vinyl figures. So guys, do you think this is the future of our vinyl ponies? Oh, absolutely. I think I think this is absolutely the Funko uh, figures that we are looking at right here. If I'm not mistaken, the official Funko Twitter has once said it's uh, uh, Pinkie Pie and Lyra next. Pinkie Pie and uh, somebody uh, else. It uh, rhymes yeah. with their names, yeah. Uh, yeah, Pinkie Pie and Myra, Ma, whatever. Yeah, Myra, it could be something like that. I, I remember that. Yeah, we were talking about it. It fits. The, the rumours, the pictures, you know, quite likely you're going to see these two pop up. And remember, you guys, you had a theory like they always pair an Earth and um, yeah, something, something else, mm-hmm. and a side character and a main character. Mm-hmm. So maybe this is exactly what we're looking at right now. Could yep. be. Could and be. Norman, do enlighten them on what, according to the Bible, is Bon Bon's real name. Uh, uh, let me just open the book that you could win. <laughs> uh, that was bad. And give him about two and a half hours to find the page because it's pretty nah. big. <laughs> Actually, I There's really no know. control F in real life. Yeah, it's that sweet drops. You that. <laughs> yeah, it's sweet drops. Bon Bon's name is Sweet Drops. No, but no, no, it's Sweetie Drops. Sweetie Drops. Sweetie Drops. Yes, I'm very sure. I wonder sure why her main is like Sweetie Bell. They must be related. In some uh. way. No, but no. Uh, the thing is here, um, it could be Sweetie Drops or Bon Bon, but it could also be Golden Harvest. No, Golden no, Harvest no. Harvest is the carrot top, my friend. Yeah, I know, but have you seen her mane? I really like her mane. No, I mean, oh, you mean the, the the vinyl figure? Yeah, it could be. Or it could be Sweetie Belle grown up. Or... No, they won't do that, but yeah. Uh, mm. So anyway, but no, I don't know. It, it looks like carrot top, but I could be wrong. I'm usually wrong at guessing, so maybe I'm wrong. But no, um, we got Octavia here, we got Lyra, we got Carrot Top. Spitfire. I want Carrot Top. <laughs> and I'm we got not Spitfire. Octavia unless she comes with a vinyl cello. 
I, you're not gonna get that. No, I'll but make one three D printer. Oh no! Don't bring that up Astro again. Astro can't stop me from three D printing a cello. Don't bring that up again. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know. I, I kind of want them. I I hope I hope they come out. But then, what about you? You're the Pinkie Pie lover here. Excited I'm getting one? Pinkie Pie fan, and I have like well, I have barely even a single shelf of pony toys. I'm not an avid collector, and uh, I don't know. I'm broke. <laughs> If I had the money, then yes, definitely. I would love to have that on my... If I'll buy 10, put one in the car. <laughs> put one on my shelf. <laughs> no, but I do have a Pinkie Pie in my car. I do have one on my piano and stuff. So, yeah, we'll make a nice addition, but perhaps when I have the cash, yeah. Was yeah, I know it's, it's a bit on the pricey side. Was that the McDonald's one? Yeah, the McDonald's yeah. one that Tasha got me. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Cool. Judging from this, soon, I guess. Hope it comes soon. out. There's also Spitfire. Oh, I, I think people are just going to give Annelie hit this and then like, Annelie is going to be so thankful. They're going to, she's going to ask her to autograph it. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. So anyway, let's move on to the next one. Um, I don't think I'll just take this one because I wrote a really long script here. Oh, my. <laughs> okay. Toys R Us reveals exclusive pony toys. Tired of your pink pony princess that says, Aren't my wings pretty? And I love my tiara. Well, if you are, we have good news for you. Starting from July 18th, you can get yourself Nightmare Moon. Am I no. supposed to be scared? Anyway, moving Ooh. on. Um, <laughs> this figure is the same one as the pink Celestia or white Celestia figure. She can talk. Her rings can move with a press of a button. What will she say? Well, my prediction is this. From this moment forth, the night will last forever. <laughs> or, my favorite, I am pleased with your offering. So pleased I may eat it instead of eating you! <gasps> Maybe, I don't know. So if Nightmare Moon is too big for you, they also have Shadow Bolt Rainbow Dash. Ah, awesome. Her size is the same as the standard brushable ponies. The only difference is her mane is almost so accurate. And she glows in the dark. And links can be found in the show notes. Guys, what do you think? Nightmare Moon, Big Nightmare Toy. Moon sounds interesting. I wonder if she has, like, removable helmet. Um, oh, boy. I think so. Let me double check because Toys I mean, R Us. That's, that's the only thing I remember about Nightmare Moon is that she has a helmet. Yeah, she's got mm, armor and stuff, right? No, no. The helmet's she printed on. The helmet. the helmet is printed on. I don't know. Guys, what do you think? Like, seriously, um, uh, with Nightmare Moon and Shadow Boat Rainbow Dash? I think the Shadow Boat Rainbow Dash is totally awesome because, for one thing, uh, I noticed that they actually cut her name. <laughs> they yeah. made it short, just like in the show. Yeah, true. <clears throat> it, just a simple modification shows that they're actually acknowledging uh, show accurate stuff, most likely as a shout out to the fandom, which is us. Mm. And <clears throat> making it glow in the dark makes it, well, Nice and collectible. I got no idea which part will glow. With Sakura, everything glows. With Rainbow Dash, what Probably will? Probably the blue glow because she's blue and blue is typically a glow color because it's easy to make. I yeah. think it's the yellow things, you know, the jumpsuit yellow kind of mm. glowy things. Could be. Work as well. But then again, I, I'm thinking that this could be perhaps the start to the probably a Nightmare Night collection. Perhaps maybe the next thing we might see is a Stasso the Bearded Twilight costume or... And the Perhaps in a bag, maybe? The Pihos in a bag, your picky the chicken nah, suit. I, I don't perhaps, think so, Dad. I, I I mean, I'm, I'm thinking it might go in that direction because, you know, this, there's no real re, there's no real backup that, okay, maybe Nightmare Moon launching is a reference to the first episode, but when you think about it, if they're releasing Nightmare Moon and the Shadow Boat Rainbow Dash, the two things they have, the thing they have in common is that they came from Lunar Eclipse. That or it could be popular demand. Or just people want to get people um, excited. But Rainbow Dash was never in a Shadow Ball outfit. Even at the first episode, he was she was only in a Shadow Ball outfit during Lunar Eclipse. And then, I mean, look at there's the so many pic- remote costumes I can ask for her. No, to just, be just just look at the picture, and then you'll see it's Rainbow Dash Shadow Ball costume, as in the one she made herself. There's uh, so marks. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I don't know, this, this could be just one of those collector's things because if you remember in the toy fair that they did a while back ago, they uh-huh. had this on display. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did. Perhaps soon, you know, maybe it's one of those paired releases like Funko. Could know. be. Oh. 
my prediction is a one shot since you know exclusive and all that and then maybe they wait for the next year and then they 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 make another one shot true and then we'll just have to see what they well show out in stores <laughs> Showcasing is magic. Yeah. True indeed. So anyway, guys, let's move on to the next topic. And in the next topic, we got nothing. We got no guess. Well, I would say nothing really. But guys, um, I think we warrant a review or something like that. It's been a while. Multiple reviews, in fact. Indeed. So Dan, I think you have one of the most interesting and current one we have out now. Of course, yes. Um, as you all know, GM Barrow's new book, Pinkie Pie and the Rockin' Pony Palooza Party, dropped on Tuesday, the 2nd of July, in digital bookstores worldwide. And just like a good fan of the show, I pre-ordered this book on Google Play. You can get it on Google Play, you can get it on iBooks, and you can get it on Amazon Kindle. Of course, uh, the book is actually pretty good, pretty well priced. It's less than $5 USD. And... It comes completely readable, although I don't know why mine doesn't have the activity pages. But then again, I bought it for the plot. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, giggity. Yep. 68 pages, moderately long novel. And uh, as soon as you open it, uh, do you guys have any questions first or do you want me to go straight to the review? No, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. As soon as you open it, it does appeal to, uh, it does have a bit of the side of it that appeals to, you know, kids reading the book. It has its lighthearted and its usual... Um, you might think they probably could build a dictionary of Pinkie Pie terminology by the end of the book. You know, absolute delutiny and things like that. The way she talks is just got Pinkie written all over it. And they have it right. And there is a lot of awesome, awesome references in the book. It, the review on these books, like, you know, the synopsis you see on your sites like Google Play and I, iBooks, sorry, no, I just iBooks, they're all kind of, predictable reviews is be like they say Twilight's a new princess or in this case Pinkie Pie's rock farm is in trouble and you're thinking oh god right they just outlined the whole story thanks Google thanks for spoiling it but in fact GM Barrow does this amazing amazing thing of she knows us fans she knows bronies mm-hmm. and she just puts in what we want to see and she knows that there are things that she writes in there only we will get there are names for characters in the show that are canonized and in fact you know it's about if you read the synopsis, it just says that Pinky organized a rock concert, and the opening co- opening act of the rock concert was performed by Cold Hay. Now, anybody <laughs> our age would know what <laughs> reference that is. No, okay. the kid won't recognize it. But it's like the opening Pony Palooza was not was opened by Cold Hay. It's like if if you showed a non Brony that, they'll be like, "What?" It, it's absolutely amazing content. It's a little bit on the kiddie side with the words and stuff because you know it just it tends to appeal to both audiences but if you just have that little bit of patience to sit down complete the entire book i did it one whole sitting because i was waiting for somebody but it is really really a great read and <coughs> comparable comparably i would say gm barrow is a great writer and i believe that maybe one day she should do an episode she's got this really awesome imagination she develops characters really well and she shows the best and the worst and of course Pinkie pie has her extreme she's as much as she's a fun-loving party pony, she's also a bit of a paranoid, uh, passive-aggressive kind of pony as well. And they show that part just equally as well. And it shows how she she has this paranoia where, of losing her friends. Uh, which wow. is illustrated in the show in Party of One. She has a really strong paranoia, like, my friends don't like me and they don't want to be my friends anymore. And that can bring her to absolute depression level where she starts talking to inanimate objects. Mm-hmm. And they referenced that. They said, the last time we saw Pinky like this was when she started talking to inanimate objects. So you know that book is even referring to episodes. Mm-hmm. And what I love is I said previously, way, way long, long time ago on this show, is that the contiguity in this series is what has shown that it has grown from just your run-of-the-mill kids show into something awesome. So 4.5 out of 5 stars. Go ahead and get it. Get okay, 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 then. Yeah, so really made a convincing argument there. I feel like getting the book. Yep. And, yeah. it, and, it's, and it's basically, it's not like huge novels that you see in the shop. I mean, the comic costs much, much more. It's actually quite cheap. It's 450 USD. And I, I didn't expect it to be that... It's even cheaper than the Twilight Sparkle book because the Twilight Sparkle book was longer. Hmm. Okay. And so this is actually a worthwhile buy. It's about the price of a pony. Yeah. Hmm. What's the price of a pony toy? What's the Twilight Sparkle book you're talking about? The Twilight Sparkle book is the first book in the series that GM Barrow came up with, Twilight Sparkle and the Crystal Heart Spell. Ah, yes, yes. Ah, yes, that one. 
And uh, it's about Twilight's first week of being a princess. I don't know how that will tie into Equestria Girls because that is GM Barrow's next book that's launching in, if I'm not mistaken, September. It's uh, My Little Pony Equestria Girls. I have that on pre-order as well. I can't wait to read it. It's, I think, Equestria Girls, the novel. Wow. Okay, then. From someone who says he didn't like Equestria Girls to I don't mind Equestria Girls to I'm going to buy the book. Wow. That's okay. because of the ingredient of GM Barrow. It's because I, I didn't order it at first. You know, I thought like, crap, I'm just going to watch the movie. But when I read the first book and now I see, I, and I just thought, okay, I'll go back to an author profile and see what other books is coming up. I just pre-ordered the whole lot. So that was one of them. And I thought, you know, if she's writing it, I want to read it. Okay, cool. I mean, if it was written by some other, I don't know who, then maybe not. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Cool. Or if it's like, Equestria Girls, the reader, then maybe man. You know? <laughs> but if it's uh, Equestria Girls by G.M. Barrow, that made it a seller for me. Because she has not let me down for these first two books, and I'm very sure she won't let me down for the rest. And in fact, her next book, just let me pull it up for a second, which is still not available for pre-order yet, is Rainbow Dash and the Daring Do Double Dare. <laughs> Could not be what I want, but... Eh. And it puts it at the back, we dare you to read it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, 4.5 out of 5, and I must buy... 4.5 out of 5, an amazing, uh, amazing, amazing little book. Not too long, you know, one sitting at a, a bookshop or maybe even a bus stop. And if you really, really... It gets you really engrossed. Because what happens is that she has this fair share of cliffhangers at the end. You pretty much think you know what's going to happen. You think, oh crap, they offended Pinky. Now Pinky's sad. She's going to go back to her house and get her mane all straight. But I can tell you one thing. You are in for a complete surprise. Okay. Because, um, just a little spoiler, she repaints her room. Oh. Emo Black. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh. yeah I'll leave the rest to you to find out what is, what happens. Do get it. 4 out of 5. 4.5 4. out of 5. Okay, dokey, dokey then. Well, um, if you do like the pinkies, go buy the book. Uh, it's only what five dollars. Yeah, it's it's about four something. The Twilight Sparkle book is uh, five seventy US dollars, and this is cheaper. It's about four seventy, I think. Well, yeah. less than five US dollars. That's that's already a convincing buy because five dollars gets you a pony from the local Toys R Us. So save yourself a little spot on your shelf. You know, you could do without one pony. Get the book. Indeed, and also if you notice Steam is having a sale. Well, if you can buy a game on Steam, you can buy a book. That's very true. So, while I go and grab some links on where you can get this book, Charlie, I heard you have a review as well. I actually managed to somehow acquire some plush toys from Russia. Wow. <laughs> I have no idea how it happened. From it, Das Motherland. Yes, <laughs> and, and, and they're pretty okay. I mean, they're, they're more than okay. They're, they're pretty ni- nice plushies. Uh... Plushies from Russia, courtesy of DeviantArt user name of Renz Twin, and as recommended by a friend of the MBS show, Mr. Kalpi, quite some time ago, long time ago. And uh, finally, it has arrived. I think it was a couple of months back, if I'm not mistaken. I think so too. Hmm. What I did was, I ordered... <laughs> yeah, one, one large, one medium, and one small plush, plushies. Wow. And... <laughs> Um, they're all Pegasus. Okay. The large one is a Fluttershy, the medium one is a Rainbow Dash, and the small one is a Derpy Hooves. Wow. And, um, how do I describe them? Hmm. Color-wise, they are very show accurate. It's, the Fluttershy is yellow, it's perfectly matching the show. Rainbow Dash, it's very rainbowy, and uh, the mains are actually show accurate as well. Main-wise, they are made out of minky fur, I believe. That is... The, what, what, actually, what is minky fur? <laughs> it is it's a form of plush, if I'm not mistaken. I, I have no idea, actually. I've tried looking it up, but uh, there's like no clear definition on what it is. I, I suppose it's synthetic plushy fur, as it says. <laughs> <laughs> synthetic plushy fur. Uh-huh. The cutie marks are the best part of it, because what happens is uh, it's, it's actually sewn on, on both sides. Unlike the toys that we actually get uh, from official products, QD marks are always on one side. But if it's a custom-made product, obviously you can make it better and it's more show accurate by having it on both sides. Uh, and the other details, mm, wings. Wings are, well, they're soft and they're foldable. The eyes are glued on, not uh, sewn on as uh, what we'd expect. But they're actually pretty okay for a total of a 100 USD. A large Fluttershy, it's pretty okay. So I have to t- say a great big thank you to Kalpain out there for recommending uh, 
good quality toys. Never go wrong with a cupping recommendation. Yep. Yay. Yeah. Just a little update. I'm sorry about earlier. No, the book is not available on the Kindle store, but it's available on the Barnes and Noble Nook Bookstore. I'm sorry, I got that wrong. I confused the two American bookstores, huh? Yeah, says the guy with the American account. This book is only available oh, for download on your iPhone, iPad, or iTouch. Yeah, that's the iBook, the iBook one. Oh, but anyway, on to my review. Mm. Wow, we're we're having a productive episode. Yay. Yay! So anyway, my review is My Little Pony, The Elements of Harmony book. Um, considered to be the encyclopedia of the whole three seasons of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. In here, you'll get episode review, character descriptions, uh, lyrics to the show. You got interviews with Lauren Faust. What else do you have in here? Pictures, there's a lot of pictures. If you love pictures, there's pictures in here. And, well, there's friendship facts. I got no idea what that's supposed to mean. Um, okay, here's a description. An overview of the fandom, the appeal for the fans of all ages, and a few words from the show creators. I say that's the most interesting part, really, because that part there, it's... I don't know how to describe it. Um, there's a lot of things inside here that makes me go da and go to tears. I'm not good at describing things, so I'm just taking a look-see. And I recommend this book. Um, I bought it for, what, 17 US dollars, maybe? It, it does say here. Let me double-check. Okay, um, 17 dollars for US, 19 for Canada. And this book, it's really thick. It has a hard cover. And, yeah, I would recommend it. It's a must-buy if you're a fan of the show. That's your Bible, the New Testament of my Princess Celestia. Indeed. I have to agree, it is a very good quality uh, book, hardcover. So my reference is like, next time somebody comes to your house, um, so who's that pink pony in the show? Well, I shall consult the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could just tease you guys with something here that... Oh, please do. Yeah, tell us a bit about the book, Norman, like the chapters and all that. Give me a second. Encyclopedias have chapters? <laughs> no, no. I, I think I'll just uh, give you a second because there's a song here I remember way back when that um, Amy Keating said that something, something... Give me a second. I'm trying to look for that one. But okay, um, here's an example. Um, Megan McCartney, story editor. Uh, BBBFF is special to me because as I was writing the lyrics... I was thinking about the amazing relationship that my daughter has with her older brother. If they start to get on each other's nerve as they get older, I'm going to force them to listen to <laughs> to it on loop until they make up. <laughs> so this is why they never had a single fight. Indeed. I thought, is it possible? How? Well, now we know BBPFF based on a true story. Indeed. I don't know, but this is cool. This is cool. Like, I mean, those little quotes that you don't get in the show or any Wikipedia page, this is cool. Okay, yeah. maybe if somebody bought this, they'll edit the wiki page, but no, 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 you'll, you'll get it here first. Yeah, I would agree with that. Exclusive interviews. Yeah, and if you ever wondered who sang the part for Bab Seeds, like, we all know who sang which part, which part. and Don't tell me Jesse Carlson got commissioned for it or something. No, 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 no. I, I'm just trying to look. Where is that season three song? It should be here. The success song. No. Okay. The seeds. Okay. Um. Funny enough, I'm taking a look here and mm, no, Sweetie Belle. Sweetie Belle does not sing. I think she falls under Cutie Mark Crusaders. Yes, indeed. But still. Oh, Cutie Mark Crusaders is voiced by one person or something. No, no, all three of them. Come okay, on, yeah. be serious, be serious. All three. No, are they all three voiced by the same person? No, um, I think Sweetie Belle's VA singing VA is Michelle Kreber. Michelle Kreber. Oh yeah, that's sing right. Apple Bloom and I think Natalie Sharp. Was it Natalie Sharp? I don't remember who sang, um, who sang Skurlu. I think it's Natalie Sharp. Am I right? Could be. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not, not sure either. either. Actually. Okay, give me a second. Open the wiki page. Da, 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 da. Well, some things that some things you need to open the wiki page. Yeah, like, some things aren't available in the Bible. You need to consult the Bible source. <laughs> Indeed. 
<laughs> no, but seriously, um, this book is really good. You guys should get it or should win one from me. I would recommend it 100%. Go for it. Indeed, indeed. Let me get more expand, please. Um, I mean, why no? VA voice, who? The... Mary Peters, not Anthony Sharp. Oh, Who's Mary, Mary Peters, right. Yeah. Mary Peters. Ah, yes, that is. Yes, that's the VA for Scootaloo, and I think she does the singing for her. I think that's my review. Not not a good one, but I say go buy. I won't give it a number. It's just go buy. Okay. I mean, so um, why don't you give us some links about where we can get it from? Well, technically, there's no digital version of the book, so... No, 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 just, you know, like, properly a site where we can order the hard copy. I mean, that is... That book... I don't know if y'all can imagine it. I think we should put some pictures in the show notes. The cover looks fantastic. It looks like the original book just pulled straight out of the show. So Almost. even if you don't want to read it, that is a collector's item right there. Indeed. And <laughs> the book is just $17 American. So it's worth it. And um, let me see. Actually, can... in fact, I think the Amazon site I just posted to get the Pinkie Pie's book is even cheaper there. It's $11.14. Yeah. Hardcover. Yeah. Here we are. Hold on. Let me get the. Let me get, let me send you the link for this. I just saw that in the related section. It's eleven fourteen. Yeah, but shipping and handling, it costs yeah. more. Oh, you, oh, you mean sixty, including shipping and handling? Damn, that's cheap. No, no, no. The book itself is sixteen dollars, seventeen dollars. I'm looking at the price here. Well, the book itself is seventeen dollars. Yeah, Amazon does things cheap. I don't know how. But anyway, go buy it, guys. Go, God go. bless you, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> go buy it because um. You, they, they deserve all the things. They deserve all the cash. They deserve all the cash. Yes, increase their sales. Support the official products. Indeed. Yeah. Yo, ho, ho. So anyway, yeah. um, I think that was reviews from us. Short yep. episode, really no guests. Unless you so, want to call uh, Charlie as a special guest here. <laughs> <laughs> so just a final, probably like a final verdict if you had to summarize your entire... Um, you know your review into what one line, one sentence. I don't, don't just say buy. There's two words, not one sentence. Um, one sentence. What would you summarize your stuff as? So Charlie, why don't we start with start with you? These plushies. One sentence to summarize it. One sentence to summarize. Hmm. Your verdict. Hmm. My verdict is if you can, if you ever want a plushie, this is one of the best that you can get for value for money. Yes, that is the verdict. So. Is it publicly available for order? That's yes, right. you just oh, okay. have got to go um, to email the creator and most likely you have to wait a while before you get a response. And if, she, if the creator responds, well, um, you just have got to collaborate via email and then you're on your way to get the plushie. Alright, so can you leave uh, the DeviantArt link in the show notes? Sure thing, I'll link you up in the show notes. Alright, so Norman, how about you? Fantastic. I told you to go more than two words and now you go down to one. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you want me to go more? Oh, okay. One sentence, one sentence, like a verdict like that. Oh, okay, okay. More than two words? I mean, up to you. I mean, just like a verdict, like if there's one book you ever buy in your life, this is it or something like that. This is the book you must buy. Go get it. Ten words. Okay, good. Problem solved. <laughs> what about you, Dan? Well, for me, I would say this is one book that if you're done reading a print copy and if you want some if you want to pass along some happiness this might be the best book to leave at a book crossing oh I see it's like if, some, if somebody finds this and they're darn pissed off and perhaps maybe she even ripped the cover off to you know, fool some people into thinking oh this is one of them serious novels so mm, serious <laughs> and they open up and that exact same moment of mm, serious serious is actually in that novel so <laughs> yeah that would be a great great surprise okay. I would love to find a novel like this sitting on you know a, a book crossing or somewhere it's a story that's built to be shared okay now I'm convinced I want to try and read that book yeah, me too. Get that encyclopedia, and we need to get some plushies as well. So um, yeah, we I, just convince each other into buying more things. Oh, about plushies, I might have a review next time if I get one soonish. Are you going for Aurora 4D or, or Funrise? Oh, definitely not Funrise, right? No, no, no Funrise for me. It's a uh, fourth dimension. I'm, I'm trying to. Let's give it a and, okay, and for your information, dear listeners, Norman already convinced me before the show to hop onto the Steam sale. So, <laughs> yes, Norman is a very influential person. Yes. Be careful with what he tells you. 
So anyway, that was our review. That was our verdict. Ten word verdict from me. Yay! And um, links will be provided in the show notes, however possible. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is shout outs. My shout out goes to you guys. Thank you for being on. Yay! I can no shout out at. And thank you to the listeners who are listening to this very non non guest centric episode. You're awesome. Mm-hmm. Yep. What about you, Dan? My shout out goes to GM Barrow for writing an amazing story. Ooh, mm-hmm. that's a good one. <laughs> Just I mean, so? I, okay, I don't know who wrote the encyclopedia. The the, the guy. Was it by one person or multiple people? But I know the book was written by GM Barrow, and even though she did use stock vectors for the covers. And that they were a little unfitting because they're like, Pinky is already having a nervous breakdown and she's smiling and jumping around in the front of the chapter. <laughs> it's it's still a great book. One book that should not be judged by the generic pony vector on its cover. Well, you could always Twitter her. Oh, she's the writer, not the, you know, person who worked with InDesign. She probably no, 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 I'm just saying that you could Twitter her, say thank you. Of course, of course, I will do that. And what about you, Charlie? Mm, my shout out good day goes to your friend goes... who sent you plushies. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> well, I don't really know the person really actually. Um, Rent Twin. I'm not sure if it's even a guy or girl, honestly. <laughs> hey, you, you're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. I, I, I actually, I, I can't think of anything because you know, well, kind of blur. The best thing I can think of right now. Yes, I can shout out to my lunch and dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, because today has been such a hectic day, uh, I was I was uh, I was only very glad I was able to get some, in some lunch and dinner. After that, I was really blur. Wow, yeah. Charlie, you have the most awesome shout outs to give. <laughs> I can't think. I'm seriously. Uh, I'm sleep deprived. Uh, really. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, guys. Charlie here needs sleep, so we need to go because he needs sleep. I need oh. sleep as well because it's like final exams are coming up and I need sleep. Indeed, because I think I all of us. Ho- if I don't sleep at home on the bed, suddenly the exam hall looks like a five star hotel. Indeed. Wow. Oh, wait, guys, wait, guys, wait, guys. I forgot something. I forgot something. This is the part that everybody's been ah. waiting for. Yes, of course. Yeah, you know, it's the part where Daniel just uh, starts ranting about Equestria Girls again. So No, not that. Not that. <laughs> not that. Not that. You're going to love Equestria Girls. Trust me. The questions. Yes, the questions. Yeah, and for your information, I won't even be in Malaysia when Equestria Girls airs on the local TV. We'll buy the DVD for you, Dan. Yes, thank you very much. Anyway, question for week one is... What is the number of episodes, not including specials... Were there no guests on the show? And name the episode number. Answer applies from this episode, not the future episode. So there's a future episode that we don't have any guests. Don't count that one. Okay. Let me repeat the question again. What is the number of episodes, not including specials, were there no guests on the show? And name the episode number. I think it's 42. Uh, yeah. That's your answer to everything. Oh, True yeah. indeed. We've been running about, what, 70 now? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah but Charlie here is sleep deprived, so if you pick his answer, it's going to be wrong. <laughs> there are good days, there are bad days. Uh, and then there are days that I think I'm the guest. <laughs> so then, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. Good luck, guys. Yeah, good luck. So wait for next week's questions. It could be easy. It could be hard. Maybe I'll maybe for week five I'll just say what's Rainbow Dash's name. <laughs> so anyway, guys. Uh, you you give them the full name and they're gonna have to start digging through the encyclopedia. They buy a copy just to answer the question and then they'll be like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Fine, fake. <laughs> no, but anyway, guys, I think uh, we should go to rest. <laughs> Bedtime. Indeed. Time, yep. We need sleeps. Technically, not really bedtime for the people who's hearing this in the day. Yeah, but I mean, for us, we record at 11 p.m. on Saturday night, so that's why I don't answer the phone during that time. And basically, we're all going to sleep on our hard bed, which is our pillow, and Charlie here has got some nice cuddly new toys on his bed. And those needle ponies. mm, Ouch. Ouch. 
So anyway, Those. guys, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at show at gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, you can reach me at norman at show.com and daniel at show.com and charlie at show.com. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. And you could also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show, and my Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. I usually post things related to the show or what I'm doing, usually what I'm eating. So if you want to have happy eating time, follow me. And you can follow me at St. Pinky, and don't worry, I don't post what I'm eating, so I don't make you hungry. But and, he uh, does write a lot. So be yeah, careful. If you, want, if you want your daily rage quit dose, you know, you don't need to even need to subscribe to Rooster Teeth anymore. You get it from me. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, oh, Rooster, Rooster Teeth is awesome. Indeed. Oh, you, Rooster Teeth. You. Uh, I suppose you can reach me at Drexy, D-R-C-X-Y. Um, although nothing much ever happens there. You should but, post more, man. You should post more. Do this fun. I know. It's just that, well, uh, I haven't think of anything good to post at the moment. Food. <laughs> Food. <laughs> Yes, lunch and dinner, yes. That was great, man. That was great. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, yes. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. Links will be provided in the show notes. So, I've been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. I'm Charlie. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.
Anyway, joining us today is the news. Oh God, give me. Welcome back. <laughs> Way to go, Norman. Way to go. Woo-hoo. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't. I, I don't need to explain myself. Anyway, um, three, yeah. two, one. Mimoko rolls out derpy flash drives. For San Diego Comic Con 2013. I don't know. That sounds very good. Uh, hey, my flash drive is derpy. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, should be formatted every five times.